I'd like to call to the stage Mr. Cesar Eloa and Matt Sakakini. Please put your hands together. And we can't forget Ms. Keiko Kamaki on the piano. Please give it up. Hello. Thanks for coming out, everybody. Maybe we can start off just uh, introducing ourselves. I'm Matt Sakakini. I'm a, a professor of music at Tulane. And uh, I've been here in New Orleans since 1997. How about y'all? And I am Cesar Elwa, I'm a New Orleans vocalist. And to accompany me here today is Miss Keiko Kamaki. You wanna introduce yourself, Keiko, where you're from? I am from Japan. I was raised, uh, born and raised in Japan. I decided to move to New Orleans six years ago, and right now I'm playing piano in New Orleans. All right, let's welcome uh, Caesar. Keiko. Thank you, thank you. Now, Caesar, uh, I'm gonna start off with a controversial question. Maybe you don't wanna answer it, but uh, how old are you? Oh, uh, let's see. <laughs> I'm 58 years old. 58 years old. Wow, you're looking great. Now, I ask because uh, 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 today you, sa uh, you, you played on the Congo Square stage uh, yes, 11 yes. in the morning. Yes. And I heard you say something that, that really surprised me, which was this was your j Jazz Fest debut as a solo artist. Right, right. I've been here with Dr. Jordan. Um, I've been here with the Wild Magnolia Indians. Been here with Monk Boudreaux. Been here with... MG Funk, I mean, you know, but as an, in, as an artist, individual artist, this is my first time. Unbelievable. Anyone uh, out there on the Congo Square stage today see uh, Caesar? Yeah. Can you, can you believe uh, this is his Jazz Fest debut with a voice like that? You'd think you'd be uh, playing Jazz Fest your whole life. Um, well, maybe you could tell people uh, uh, why we haven't heard of you at 58 years well, old and you, with a voice like that. I tell you, uh, I've spent a lot of time hanging out with people like James Rivers, and I sat in with them, kept in touch with the music business. But I spend my, uh, I make my living as a steam plant engineer. And for the record, I am very proud of that. And I would like to say that... Um, I was a part of the team that got the water out of this city during Katrina. Mm. Yeah, the, the Corps of Engineers claimed that it would take us three months. We did it in 11 days. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing that for like 34 years. Wow. So, um, but in the meantime, I had the opportunity to take a run to Japan, spend two months doing music, take a run to China doing music. Uh, I worked around town. I did quite a bit around town. I just kind of stayed in touch with the music, you know. But at this point, I'm ready to retire, and now I'm doing what I call the transition. And uh, in that effort, I recorded a CD called New Orleans, to, entitled New Orleans to Paris. Mm. And what I did, I collected what some people consider as some of New Orleans' finest musicians. I have Herlin Riley on drums, Leroy Jones on trumpet, mm. Thaddeus Richard, Chris Severin, um, Jamal Williams, Doc Paulin. I mean, you know, I got some really good cats. A-list, A-list. Yeah, and I, got, I called them, the, I described them as the A-team. <clears throat> and we went to work and we produced uh, what, what some people say is a pretty decent project. Mm. So that's part of my effort to make my transition to do what I want to do now instead of what I needed to do. Mm. I'll, let's... <clears throat> talk more about that in just a minute, but I think there might be some people out there, as I mentioned, who um, uh, uh, might not yet be familiar with you, and we're gonna have plenty of time to talk, but I'd love to hear some music, and I'm sure other people would as well. <laughs> Anyone wanna hear a song to get Caesar Let's started? do one song. You wanna do, uh, let's do Ray Charles, Hallelujah, I Just Love Us. So I'm in a party type mode today, so. Uh -huh. It's all right if you want to clap your hand just a little bit. Yeah. Well, let me tell you about a girl I know. She's my baby and she lives next door. And every 
morning when the sun comes up She brings me coffee in my favorite cup That's why I know, oh I know A hallelujah, I just love her so When I'm in trouble and I have no friends I know she stick with me until the end And everybody asks me how I know I smile and tell them cause she told me so That's I know, oh I know A hallelujah, I just love her so When I call her on the telephone And I tell her that I'm all alone And by the time I count from one to four I hear on my door uh, in the evening when the sun goes down and there ain't nobody else around. She kisses me and she holds me tight. She tells me that everything's all right and I know, oh, I know, a uh, hallelujah, I just love her so. A uh, hallelujah, I just love her so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's fun, y'all. That's fun. I've been having fun out here today. I think I've been having more fun than the, the people in the audience today. But, if uh, you just joined us, we're here with uh, Caesar Elwa and Keiko Kamaki. Uh, Caesar, uh, tell us about growing up in New Orleans and, and how you, you got started here with, with music oh as well. Man. That, that was, um, I kind of feel real blessed in that respect. I kind of started off in an area that's called Shrewsbury, with, and my mother was like a clone of Aretha Franklin, mm. and she would bring us to these Baptist churches on a street called Andover Street. And the thing about it, I was missing my brother Michael here, and we'd go to church with my mom, and I'd always say, I don't want to go to that church no more. They fight too much. Well, what they were doing, you know, when the spirit hit them, they start shouting. You, you familiar with that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I thought they was fighting. So I said, my mom won't go there no more. Well, and I finally figured out that they weren't fighting. Then I started to focus on the preachers. The preachers was always great singers. You always mm -hmm. had like Fre Reverend Freddie Dunn, I think was his name. I mean, this, he's probably he's more likely dead now, but he was an awesome singer. And um, in this area, the same area on Sundays, Tommy Ridgely. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Tommy Ridgely. Mm -hmm. You all? Yeah, well, Tommy originally, um, they played music like under the bridge of the causeway. You call mm. it the causeway bridge. On Sundays, they would set the band up out there. Shrewsbury was, was along the Mississippi River in, in what we now call Old Jefferson. Is that's that right? right. That's right. And, and Tommy originally, one of the that's founders of R&B, was, was from there. Right. That's where he was from. And um, some Sundays, they set up next to my aunt's house. So I was a little kid one day, and for some reason, he gave me the microphone to sing Ooh Poopy Do or something. Mm -hmm. And that's when the stuff started. Mm -hmm. I loved it. <laughs> it's been like, it's been, you know, I've been like at it ever since. But um, and then when I, at some point, we moved to New Orleans, I hooked up with uh, a guy named Amity Castanel. We used to go take private lessons on the clarinet. And uh, then I learned to sing a lot of street music, you know, that. Mm -hmm. Street rhymes, if you would. Where were you living when when you came to New I was living near Bayou St. John, mm. and um, you know, it's, it's it's my father owned the barroom, still owns the barroom on Second and Dry, where the Wild Magnolia Indians dressed for like twenty something years. I mean, the night before Mardi Gras, I would go in this place in Bo Dollars, Monk Boudreaux, all these suits laid out on the table, mm. and I mean that played and gave had an influence on you know my perspective of the music as well. And then I spent some time at Southern University with Dr. Kid Jordan. Mm. Um, he had me doing the lead singing for the, the big band. You know, you have 12 trumpets, 19 saxophones, and that, that's really exciting mm. right there. In fact, we worked out here a few times during those years. I think it was like 75 and 76. But, um, you know, I kind of, for so somehow, I just followed the music, wherever it was, I just followed it. I mean, you know, I just went sat in with people, you know, and it's been like that ever since. So were you uh, uh, singing at church when people were catching the spirit, or was it just the preacher that well, was making that the music? Well, that was, that was uh, 
Them ladies with the wigs on, the wig go this way, they go that way. Man, that was frightening for a kid six years old. You don't know what's going on. I mean, you know, they're fighting in here. What the devil is this? But uh, I, it was explained to me that, no, they're not fighting. That's what happens when the spirit hit them. But anyway. Um, Just everyday. It's, it sounds like uh, in the church, everyday music, not, nothing oh particularly man, special, when, when, not when, a... Not a a when special music night just happening around you? Well, when they start playing that 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 um that music in that Baptist church, man, I'm telling you, things start to happen. Mm. You know, things start to happen. And I myself, you know, get caught up because I sing in choirs from time to time. You know, I sing in like St. Peter Cleaver's choir, you know. Mm. And there are moments when you get carried away even then. And somebody might holler, yeah! You know, it's, it's kind of changed from shouting to screaming now. So, you know, it's, um, it's all good. It's all a part of the music, you know. And, and uh, uh, it seems like Mardi Gras Indian, obviously not a sacred tradition, but, but in its own way, maybe a sacred mm -hmm. tradition, but, but uh, also a form of, of everyday music. Maybe tell, a little, tell people a little bit about what you heard at the Sportsman Corner uh, growing oh, up Oh, man, as a kid. I watched um, Monk Boudreaux. In fact, we had his party there about two months ago, mm -hmm. and we put his name on top of the building. But that is a very sacred, um, you know, tradition to these guys. That's mm. not just something you can just walk up here and all of a sudden you want to be a Mardi Gras Indian. No, you have to have some heritage involved in this. Like, mm. in fact, uh, I got a guy on my CD named David Montana. Well, that's the, one of the offsprings of Tootie Montana. And anybody that knows anything about New Orleans Mardi Gras Indians is familiar with the name Tootie Montana. Mm. The Chief but of Chiefs. Chief of Chiefs, that's right. And I got David, yeah, y'all familiar with Tootie, right? Well, I got his, I got one of his offsprings on my CD. And if you hear this guy perform, and then picture this. I connected him with Hurlin Rider. Hurlin is doing the thing mm -hmm. while he's doing what he's doing on top of it. And mm -hmm. he'll knock his socks off. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's making combinations like that when you can really show people what, you know, what New Orleans really has to offer as relate to the music. But, mm. and, and, and to back to your question, I mean, it's every year. I mean, on Second and Dry, I've been, we, my father bought that place when I was 16 years old. And to even today, I mean, Mardi Gras, I spent Mardi Gras there. I spent uh, St. Joseph night there. Uh, they got a crown in the back of the, of the, 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 the building right now for one of the Indians, you know, it's mm. just, that's another thing that I think I'm really grateful for, you know, that influence. Because it helps me, just like in, in our stage performance, well, I went into doing some Indian stuff. They like it. They mm. love it, you know. And that's uh, Monk Boudreaux territory. He's got his own it's tribe. Monk and, and Bo Dallas. The Golden Eagles. And then Bo's Bo got the, the Wild, Wild Magnolias, right. which are headquartered yes. right there. Now, now, you've done some music with them also? Well, I worked with them at Tipitina's, the House of Blues. I used to, when Marvel Wright was still kicking, Mm. I would open up, when she started the Christmas shows, I opened it up every year until she died. Um, Monk, Bo Dallas, they all out the same gang and they all participated. But I would open the show, go in and do it in the middle of the show, you know, and close the show out. And um, it, it, it was a, a lot of fun, man. It was a lot of fun. I miss those times, you know. Mm. And then Bo Dallas is sick right now. Sure is. Yeah, uh, so, you know, it's just... It's just heartening, man, you know, to see those things go. Now, let me just say, uh, a couple of days ago, I was in the presence of uh, Smokey Johnson, the drummer. Uh, there was this golf event where they named holes after each of them. Hmm. Uh, Deacon John, Deacon John, uh, James Rivers. And I don't know if you all familiar with James Rivers. James is the cat that plays bagpipe, flute, put anything <laughs> in his hand, and he will play it. Um, and to listen to the stories they told, Leo Nocentelli was there. And I listened to them tell war stories is what they call it, right? And it was what uh, Smokey Johnson mentioned the time he was doing a session at Motown. And he went to, he, he got there and Diana Ross was the secretary. And she wouldn't let him in. So he turned around, jumped in the cab, went back to the hotel. Well, Barry Gordy called him. He said, man, what's up? Where you at? And he told him what happened. He said, well, man, come on back. He got back, Barry Gordy waiting outside for him. But it was to, to, to be in the presence of those guys. I mean, you had Kid Jordan, 
And all of these people, man, are people that I've watched and I've worked under their wing. I mean, Kid Jordan took, brought me to Allen Two Cent Studio, and he, we spent like six months in that studio. In fact, um, the first 45 record I did, I did it in the Allen Studio, and I took it to Japan, and I only had 400. And now, people are paying $164 for them. So, so this was your first release. It sounds like that's the like. first song I have. I, I had what ever what done. year was that? Man, that must have been 1975. 75. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you pressed it on uh, for those on of you who don't remember, 45 we RPM wax. record. That's what we were doing. Wax. And and made a handful. And took them to Japan. Took took them to Japan and in sold the, them in ten dollars a piece. And in 2006, when I moved back in my house, record collectors started calling me. And if you can see it on my website, CaesarLY.com. Just click on the little link, it'll show you where, you know, record collectors, what they sold them for, the, where they auctioned them. Mm. And I'm just amazed by that. I mean, you know, it was only 400 records, but somehow they found their way around the entire halfway around the world. Now, I, I will say, in Tokyo, during the summer months, you do have people from all over the world in that city. Boy, that's, that's a party like <laughs> they don't have nowhere else where it used to be. But... Um, Somehow they found it way halfway around the world. I had people from Finland contacting me about that record, wanting to know if I got any more. Mm, it's become a rare collector. Man, if item. I had so, some more of those records, I could be rich tomorrow. We should talk afterwards. Maybe yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think they want the originals, though. They That's want right the one, the original. They want it with the dusty cover and that kind of thing. Right, you know, right. I, I thought about doing a remix, but that's not what they want. They want mm. the original. So. so as you're telling these stories, th there's just so much information here about uh, you're making records, you're hanging out with, with Herlin Riley, Smokey oh Johnson, yeah. uh, two of the great drummers, and you're talking about music just sort of surrounding you and you, you making some of it. And you also mentioned the, the New Orleans uh, marching band tradition uh, for, for high school kids. I know Herlin and Smokey studied with the great uh, Yvonne Bush uh, right in your neighborhood, and y and you were telling me the other day that um, you studied under the great Donald Richardson at yeah, AJ man. Bell High oh School, yeah. famous oh yeah. band director here in New Orleans. Strong so you played instrument too. What'd you play? Clarinet. Now you better play right, and when you marched, you better point your toes like this, or you hit that stick. But <laughs> I gotta tell you something, if you don't mind, about Hurlin. You mentioned Hurlin. Hurlin, yeah. Hurlin. If you ever talk to Hurlin, ask him to tell you the story about his grandfather at the dinner table. His grandfather taught him how to do tricks with the drumsticks with mm. forks and spoons at the dinner table. And, and, and nobody can tell that story like Herlin. So if you ever see him, you, you got to ask him. Just tell him Caesar told you about, about, about the, the, the dinner table and the, the spoons. But, uh, His but, grandpa but about was a drummer, right? Yeah, the, man. Joe Lasky, yes, was that yes, who it was? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And he would tell, and, and I can't even tell that story like Herlin, but it's like he living it all over again. But now Donald Richardson, Donald Richardson, man, it was is a legend. He's he's a legendary um, music instructor. Um, if for some, if for some, somehow he had a relationship with the parents, with the students, and he was just one of the most loved people that I've ever known. To date, this man been dead quite some time now. But when you mention his name, people light up. Mm. You know, in fact, um, Saint Augustine at the time was one of your primary high school bands and they would wait for him to leave Donald Richardson and bring him over there because he you know he he he, practiced, he rehearsed them seven o'clock in the morning he rehearsed them three o'clock in the evening and they had a lot he embedded a lot of pride into those kids you mm -hmm. know most of them like Kermit Ruffins is a uh, is one is come, is come out of Donald Richardson's thing I mean it's a lot of cats that's involved in the music today mm -hmm. went through Donald Richardson so you know New Orleans might be the only city in the world where, where a high school band director is a household name. Yeah, he is. And that's, the city, right? that's, that's amazing. Huh? Mm -hmm. Donald just, Richardson. Uh, as you're talking, there's just so much um, music all around you. Uh, uh, I'd like to hear some more music. You guys want to play uh, 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 another tune? Let's do, I like we Fast got plenty Domino. Of time up here. I, I, I'm, I'm just to mention real quickly, Fast Domino, when I was a kid, he was another one. Fast used to be by Muley's, a place on uh, La Hop Street. You remember that? Fats used to be at Muley's, and there was one spot. He, he, he only sat in that one seat. Every Friday, my mother would bring us over there to eat crawfish and shrimp. You know, we'd like eight, now maybe nine years old. 
But then uh, his son Anatole and I played in a band together. And he had Anatole, they had Anatole so spoiled. This boy wouldn't walk two blocks, he'd catch a cab. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I love Fats Domino. I mean, Fats will sit down and talk with you. I mean, as big a name as he is, you can ride up Caffin Avenue. If he's sitting out there like 8 o'clock in the morning, he was always outside. You catch him sitting on the porch. He'll sit there and talk with you and hang out with you until you say, well, look, Mr. Fats, I got to go. Because he would not, you know, he was a really cool cat. So let's do um, one of Fats' numbers. Uh, Blue Monday. Blue Monday, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had to work like a slave all day, but here comes Tuesday, oh, hard Tuesday. I'm so tired, got no time to play. Here come Wednesday, and I'm beat to my socks. My girl called, got to tell her that I'm out. Cause Thursday is a hard working day, and Friday I'll get my pay. Saturday morning, oh, Saturday morning, all my tiredness has gone away. I got my money and my honey, and I'm out on the field to play. Sunday morning, my head is bad, but it was worth it for the time that we had. But I've got to get my rest, cause Monday is a mess. Now let Keiko play just a little bit, play Keiko. I love this girl, y'all. the time that we had and I've got to get my rest cause Monday is a mess yeah 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 Caesar Elwa how about that voice little little Lou oh, Rawls smoothness in there today. Maybe a little uh, Aretha Franklin channeled through your mom in there too. It sounded like. Uh, yeah. And uh, and Keiko Kamaki on piano. Keiko, can I just ask, where did you learn to play piano like that? <laughs> I just I just love the new ones. Many famous pianists. I love Fats Domino. I love Alan Tucson, Doctor John. They're just learning from them. May I saw her one night at Tipitina's with uh. Topsy Chapman. Topsy had just gotten in from Germany and came directly to Tip. And I forgot what song she was doing, but she was on keyboard. And Topsy sent her off on a solo. And it was time for Topsy to start singing again. She just looking at her. She couldn't believe what this girl was doing. <laughs> but I met her with Marva Wright and um, with Charles Moore and uh, Benny Jones. Mm -hmm. And man, I've been crazy about her ever since. She, she hit on some keys. So your mom grew up singing uh, Aretha Franklin too, <laughs> Keiko, in the back in the house, no? How'd you hear uh, about New Orleans music? Uh, what, what town in Japan are you from? I'm from South Japan. It's called Kagoshima Bay. It's very south. And uh, I remember 2005, I visited the New Orleans Jazz Festival for the first time. It was just 10 days, but at that time, 
I had uh, so much fun here, and uh, after that, I decided to move to New Orleans. Mm. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> that experience changed my whole life. <laughs> and uh, this is a story we actually hear in New Orleans quite a bit. Do you, are you are you part of a community of Japanese musicians here in New Orleans, or uh, uh, I, I see a lot of Japanese musicians playing on stage with, with New Orleans musicians. Yes, today, like a Kamit Laughing G2, she, he is a Japanese piano player. Mm -hmm. And at the, at the Congo Square with Mem Shannon, there was a called, uh, guitar player, Japanese guitar player called Seizo. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud of. <laughs> a great guitar player Japanese. from the Wild Magnolias. She play too. with like you catch up with Monk and Bo and them. She play with everybody. Mm. I mean, she can funk it up. Mm. <laughs> she can funk up some stuff now. I don't, you know, but um, Tipitina is in the House of Blues. Uh, uh, she has a band called uh, what's the band? Brassaholics. The Brassaholics. Mm -hmm. I think they oh. just won the uh, Big Easy Award mm -hmm. what, a week or two ago. Yes. Yeah, she can funk some stuff up mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Keep an eye out there. And, and Caesar, we met on stage, if you yeah, remember. Yeah, 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 partying one night, huh? <laughs> That's right, partying one night. <laughs> well, I, I got hired to play a birthday party at Bullets Bar, yeah. and someone said, oh, there's a guest singer that wants to come sit in with the band. And yeah. I have to say, things seem to be going fine, and then you got on stage, and all of a sudden, it was yeah, a whole other deal. Yeah, we had a ball deal. that night, man. It was a fun environment, you mm. know? We just had big fun. That was for Stacy and Mike. Right. Oh, I love them two cats, man. Mike is so cool. He's cool as a cucumber. But um, now, we had a good time that night. We did, and, and I uh, got up the next morning and went to teach at Tulane. Now, you got up the next morning, I'm guessing, and went to the, to the water treatment plant. Right back and ran turbines in boilers. Right back doing the same thing. Tell, you've, we've heard about the music part of your everyday life. Tell us about your work and, and your family and, and uh, well, uh, your now, life here in New Orleans. You know what? I got to just say, I, I'm, I am extremely proud that I spent my life doing what I did. And, you know, it's because I felt like I was doing something. Every hurricane and flood that came to this city since 1970, I was in there. Mm. Every, I've never mm. missed one. And during Katrina... I was, we lived in that water plant and we, our families went this way, but we stayed there. Mm. And uh, I'm proud of that. Are you talking about Broad Street, the, the building? No, the see? main plant, the, the Carrollton plant. Oh, That's okay. the plant where they get all the power, all the energy from. Without those turbines, the whole system shut down. Mm. So mm -hmm. I run the turbines. The boiler room sent me the steam, I generated 25 cycle of electricity and supply all the drainage stations around the city. But without that turbine, you can boil all the water you want. Mm. <laughs> it's nothing gonna happen. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of that. Um, so you found a way to do music when you could, but you had this job. Yeah. How come you kept, uh, kept at that day job? Uh, man, that day job. To, for a young man to go into an environment like that and see all these boilers and turbines, and you know, it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's equivalent to starting a, a 747 jet. And that excited me. I said, well, this is the job I'm going to marry. Mm. But, you know, but at the same time, you know, I've always loved the music. Mm. So that was never going anywhere. But um, at the same time, you know, I had a daughter and I had a responsibility. So I kind of balance out responsibility with what I want to do and, you know, and what I have to do. Mm. So I did what I needed to do, you know. And mm. now it's my turn to burn. Well, now we're going to do the transition. You got family out here today? No, my little 18-year-old daughter keep texting me every five minutes. The last time I brought her out here, she was about six years old, and she made me go home. I was so mad when I told her I'd uh, never bring her here again. <laughs> that sounds a lot like my seven-year-old daughter yeah, right here. she'd be ready to go home. <laughs> oh, yeah, she was about that size, too. Yep, and, that's and, uh, it, that's uh, it. What's she getting ready to do next year? Chelsea's, Chelsea, I'm really proud of Chelsea, man. Chelsea was, um, her school was given a million dollars by Oprah Winfrey. Mm. And when they did the, the, the video cast, she was the spokesperson because she's the president of the class. Mm. And um, I had relatives all in California. I saw Chelsea on Oprah Winfrey. No, the people went to the school. She wasn't on Oprah. Mm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Charles, she's, she's about to enter Dillard University now. Mm -hmm. And the girl is so talented, man. You know, I think Chelsea's a little superstar. 
because, you know, usually you have to get with your children and show them how to uh, research information about what they try about the schools they want to go to. Man, this girl got there. She, she, wa she wanted to go to Louisiana Tech. She went out there and visited like three times. But then on the other hand, she kind of want to stay home. And personally, I would rather her stay mm -hmm. home. She could go to Louisiana Tech for graduate school. But, you know, that goes back to me doing what I felt was my responsibility. See, uh, Chelsea's fine now. She, you know, she's got scholarships. Now I, can, I don't have to work for her. I can quit at the end of the year. I retire. And right. now I'll be singing, you know? Look out, New Orleans. Yeah, I'll be singing now. Caesar's going to be uh, unleashed. It's and all good. I mean, you know. And, and you took a big step. Uh, uh, you, ma you made a 45, like you said, and some recordings uh, with the Suno Big Band back in the day. Yeah. Uh, but then real recently, you put out a CD of your own. You mentioned it already. But tell yeah. us a little bit about more how that well, that's, came that's together. Well, that's the one entitled New Orleans to Paris. And um, I went, got Chris Severin. Uh, who's a noted guitarist, and um, then Hurlin, and then Thaddeus, and not realizing where we were going with this. And when the whole team got together, well, let's go do something, and we, we did. Um, and it's just, it, it, the project came together in an amazing manner, because, you know, not to constantly mention Hurlin, but Hurlin had been out the country, and he told me like six months before, look, I got your back. When you're ready to rock and roll, I'm here. And he got in like 10 o'clock that night from on the other side of the world. I forgot which country it had come from. But when he got the next morning, 10 o'clock, he was in the studio sitting on the couch mm. sleep. <laughs> but when it ca came time to get behind them drums, that boy was like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. He was somebody else. So um, we kind of tweaked it and kind of took the best the studio had to offer. And in the end, I think we came up with something we could work with. Hopefully, mm. we can mm -hmm. work with. And uh, that CD, I'm sure, helped uh, get you into Jazz Fest so we can see yeah, you out I here for the first it's time. Been, it's been, it's, I, I, it seemed to have raised a lot of eyebrows. It seemed to have gotten quite a bit of attention. Um, I mean, WWOZ Radio, I mean, WWOZ is a, uh, I mean, it's just invaluable mm. because without them, I could not have I could not have reached out to Paris and uh, or halfway around the world because people a lot of people listen to WWOZ and they got all these sister stations who contacted me and asked me to send them copies. So, you know, I I, I take it all back to WWOZ. Mm. Yeah, because I mean, without them, I mean, you know, nobody would know. I'd be out here trying to, you know, but they put they played it and played it and played it and played it and. People start calling up and, you know, then they start asking me to come down and sing on the radio and come down and have interviews. And before you know it, I've made friends halfway around the country. Mm. I mean, I had one friend from New Jersey who was in front of the stage today and not, I spotted her too and I sure did shout at her. But I mean, you know, it's, it's WWOZ has been invaluable in, in, in my effort to get the music out there. Mm. So. And it's your, uh I, I'm pretty sure after your Jazz Fest debut this morning, you're going to have more friends out there. You looked like you were having so much fun oh, out man, there today. I was having fun. <laughs> you got me right. I could put my hands up. I'm busted. <laughs> I was having fun. I most certainly was. And tell me about uh, uh, the band you had out there today. Well, first of all, I'd like to mention my friends, uh, uh, one of New Orleans' premier singing groups. I invited them to work with me today, a, a group called Real Love. They worked at the casinos and different uh, big functions around town. Um, then I had like Shannon Hamilton. These, some of these guys were working with Irma Thomas, like the trumpet player, Percy Williams, the saxophone player, Emil Hall, uh, the bass player, Anthony Hamilton. Those are Irma's musicians. Mm -hmm. They work with her. Um, but you know, they kind of work, we, we family so I, you, you know. told me you grew up with Irma and we, we haven't mentioned well, her. Well Irma and my family is very close they consider her as family but she doesn't really um I was such a little kid she don't really she didn't really know me she mm -hmm. knew my mother and, and she didn't know me like that but if you mention the Rie family she's in fact she sung at the mother's funeral she mm -hmm. was down there and I was up in the balcony singing Mm. But um, yeah, Irma is, uh, and I finally got an opportunity to really have a conversation with her last July. 
uh, we did a thing at the Mahalia Jackson thing, the big fancy theater. And I finally had an opportunity to, to have a conversation with her, and, you know, so we kind of put who's who in perspective here. But mm. uh, I have a lot of admiration for her. In fact, I thought about doing one of her songs out here today. Mm. Mm -hmm. But uh, she was a big part. They, they had bowling teams. You know, they all used to bowl back in the day. Come on. Yeah, they all bowled like major lanes. And my father was one of these people. He took his children everywhere he went. Mm. I mean, you didn't even want to go. Come on, let's go bowling, you know. But, and that's how I got to see all of those people as a kid. You know, they all were on bowling teams. That was their favorite pastime, bowling. I mean, my dad had like a house full of trophies. Will you give me a call next time you go uh, bowling with Irma Thomas? And, no, and I don't bowl with her. I don't <laughs> bowl with her. I don't know if she's, I wonder if she's still bowl. I'm going to ask her. If she, she probably does if she has the time. But, um, so where could we hear uh, Cesar Elwa well, out today in New Orleans? I'm going, I'm, today I'm going by Bullet Sports Ball. Michael Ward is hanging out over there. We're okay. going to ball over there today. Uh, right um, on uh, AP Turo yeah, on the AP 7th Ward. The same place we had the party That's that right. night. Yeah. Kermit is over there on Tuesday night. It's a really, really nice place. It's an adult place. You have mm -hmm. no young people. Not like talking mm -hmm. about it. Nobody. If you're 65 or 70 years old, you fit in. If you're 40 mm -hmm. years old, you fit in. If you're 35, you got to be a little cool because <laughs> this is an adult place and we mm -hmm. be balling. They got food. They can drink all the beer you want. And... It's never, ever, never a problem. It is awesome. Mm. Table setups. Yeah, uh, man. You get the bucket of beer. Oh, yeah. It's, it's really nice. And Tuesday night, some, some like during this time of year, it looks like Mardi Gras around it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think they used that place in that Treme movie. In the, in the TV show yeah, Treme, yeah. they've got I, a... In fact, a, I grew up in the Treme. I lived in the Treme since when I was from I was 16 to maybe an adult. Mm. And I had I, that was another thing that kind of had a part of had a you know influence on my perspective on the music i mean i lived on robertson street mm -hmm. no second line came in that area unless it passed in front of my door and i don't want to tell this story but i'm gonna try to be vague about it but i lived in an upstairs house and when you live upstairs you can hear the music from way down the block with these 72 inch mm -hmm. windows and i would be in the bathroom i'm not gonna say what i was doing but I would be in the bedroom and hear that music and fly down them steps out the door. And my aunt would run behind me. Boy, I keep telling you, stop leaving my so-and-so door. <laughs> and it'd be hours before I come back, man. The, the second line bands would always come up Robertson Street. And that's some invaluable, you know, growing up right mm -hmm. there. For that. And it was, I mean, all the, all the old cats. Kermit was a little kid, and I think his daddy managed our band. I don't think he was even involved in that group then, because that was before his time. I mean, you talking about 1969 and 1970. But, um, you know, the, the, the Trimmy area was really something else then. I mean, there was a lot of nostalgia mm -hmm. in that area. Right. You know what I'm saying? There was a lot of nostalgia. I mean, children would beat on the garbage can tops and make music, you know. But um, I'm, I feel blessed to have experienced that also. And I think a lot of this stuff, you know, collectively, when you put it together, I mean, I felt so good in that room with Smokey Johnson, Kid Jordan, James Rivers, Leo Nocentelli. You know, I felt so good in that room with these cats I, by the way they, you know, like Kid, Dr. Jordan. Now, this cat can play with Rita Franklin, you name him, he played with him. And he was talking to uh, the lady that does the scat, uh, Jermaine Basil. And he stopped talking to her when he spotted me, because I haven't seen him in a while. And came over and man, I've been hearing about you, you know. But it, it just felt so good. And James Rivers, his, 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 my mother and he and my mother have the same birthday. Mm -hmm. And I never not called him on April 18th. But, you know, I just felt so special in that room among these guys. You know, I had to get them all together and take a few pictures, man. But, yeah, I think I'm rich as it relates to, and it's a, it's a lot of guys like myself, you know, who are rich as it relates to the music culture. Mm. But, you know, when you take certain avenues to get to it, like in the street, where it's all that, where the root of it is, I kind of like that area. Mm -hmm. And that you all ha share that together. Yeah, with I kind of like that. Those musicians. Now, I, then, you know, I saw a video on uh, Wynton Marcellus and Trombone Shorty I was looking at last night, right? And you can see 
Now, Shorty has been musically educated, don't get me wrong, but you could see the influence the street have on him mm -hmm. when he blow that horn with Wynton Marcellus. I mean, he just get wild. And it's all very, very entertaining. So yeah. I, I appreciate that, uh, that aspect of it all. Caesar, you seem like a, an ambitious man. I, I'm betting you've got some plans uh, for the future. We've talked about your past. What do you, what do you want to do? Uh, what are your goals uh, well, looking ahead Well, we're starting here? on the second project. We st again, here's the transition time. We're starting on the second project. Uh, we already have two of the songs down, or two of the rhythm tracks down. Mm -hmm. And we're starting on the second project, and I'm going to just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. I mean, you know, if I never get rich doing this, I'm rich because I love it so much. That's, that's you know, that's, that works for me. That's a beautiful statement. Yeah, man. Uh, I mean, you know, if, 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 if you're doing something, just like I, like I mentioned that job, when I went in there and saw all these big turbines and boilers, and wow, man, I love this. You know, I could would have paid them to work there at first. But when I got a little smarter, you know, I said, well, they need to be paying me. But, uh, you know, when you're doing what you want with your life, that's what richness is to me. When you're doing what you want to do and you're happy doing that, mm. yeah. I mean, I've gone places around town where I couldn't spend a dime. You know what I'm saying? But so it's, it's I would like to remain rich and continue doing what I'm doing, mm -hmm. you know. You got your partner by your side here. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'd love to hear uh, a last song. I'm getting a cue that it's about time to wrap up, but okay, we got time for a tune. You, you want to do a slow one? You want to do change going to come or something? Okay. In G? You want to try that? We'll do a Sam Cooke song, y'all. All right? Let's see here. In a little tent And oh Just like that river I've been running Ever since It's been a long, long A long time coming But I know my change is gonna come, oh, yes it will. It's been too hard living, but I'm afraid to die, cause I don't know what's up there. Beyond the sky, it's been a long, long, a long time coming, but I know my change is going to come. Then I go to my, 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 my brother, yeah. And I say, brother, let me But 
right now I'm able to carry on. It's been a long, a long, a long time coming, but I know my change is gonna come. My brother, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I say, brother, help me please. Yes, yeah. But then he winds up knocking me. He knocked me down on my knee. Whoa, there was a time when I, I thought I couldn't last for long. But right now I'm able. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. A lot of fun, y'all. That was a lot of fun. Caesar Elwa, let's give him one more hand. Thank you very much. Keiko Kamaki on piano. Thank you, everybody.